Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's exciting to be in the house of the Lord. Now, it wouldn't be near as exciting if the air conditioners were broke down. Wouldn't be near as exciting if, if Jesus wasn't here. I think I'd t leave. I'd just take the day off. Amen. But Jesus is here, so I ain't taking the day off. I want to worship the Lord. Amen. Excited about the baptism, and that's a thrilling, thrilling thing. And let me encourage you, if you haven't been baptized or you feel like you need to kind of re-energize yourself, now's today, this is the morning to do it. Amen. And so I know the Lord will bless you. I'm really proud of Randy. Of course, he gave his heart to the Lord Easter Sunday, and he's just stayed in and, and been true and faithful, and I'm proud of him. He's my cousin, and uh, Randy is an awesome young man, and uh, he uh, is going to follow the Lord and, along with uh, Candy and David. And, and uh, what can I say about David? I'm not going to say a word. Anyway, but <laughs> good to be in the house of the Lord. I want you to open up your Bibles with me, please, to the book of Acts chapter 2. And we're going to begin reading with verse 36, Acts chapter 2 and verse 36. Now, we're going to be looking at the, the last part of chapter 2, which is the uh, first fruits of the, the day of Pentecost. Actually, it is some of the first fruits of when Jesus Christ arose out of the grave and the beginning of what we're experiencing now. And I am so grateful for the fact that when Jesus Christ got up out of the grave, he took me with him, he took you with him. And so we're gathered in this house, not serving a dead God, but a living God. Knowing that God is very much, much alive in this house. And once again, I, I do wanna make mention that this is the first fruits of Pentecost, some of the first fruits. In fact, there was 3,000 people saved in this chapter. And it is a great momentous start of the church or of the ministry that Jesus Christ brought to us. Acts 2.36, therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye crucified both Lord and Christ. Notice the word, therefore, let the house of Israel know assuredly that that same Jesus, that same Jesus, I said that same Jesus that was crucified on the cross of Calvary, that same Jesus that died on that cross and shed his blood for the sins of the world, that same Jesus that suffered for you and I, that died on Golgotha's hill, God has made him Lord and Christ. And by his name, we all can go to heaven in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want to use for a subject this morning, the world's greatest startup. You may be seated. This is a startup point. In Acts chapter two, this is a tremendous moving of God's spirit. In fact, Peter, this is the first public preaching after the resurrection of Jesus Christ and his ascension to heaven. This gathering is a preaching like no other preaching I believe has ever existed. Peter is the one speaking and the Bible says he stood up not only himself but with the other 10 apostles they stood up together and Peter preached a dynamic message. When you get home, uh, take some time to read all of Acts chapter two and you'll find how dynamic this message is. I'm grateful for the fact that God has come into my life, that God has changed my life. I'm grateful for the fact that Jesus Christ is still changing lives. I guess I could put it like this. He alived me. Jesus alived me. And uh, Peter stands up, and of course, this is the day of Pentecost. And Peter stands up with the other apostles, and he preaches this dynamic message here in Acts chapter 2. 
And Peter said it will come to pass that God would pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And that spirit of God being poured out upon all flesh will cause young men to see visions, old men dream dreams. There would be wonders in the heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. There would be blood and fire and vapor and smoke. The sun would turn into darkness and the moon would be eclipsed like blood. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved in that end time and we are now in that place. We are now at the end time of this, this closing generation. I want you to understand that when Jesus Christ uh, came and gave us eternal life, he, he came with the, the blessing in mind and, the, and the, the foreknowledge of God that we would be part of his ascension, part of his great anointing and great life that he has in heaven. We're gonna get to go there and be with our Lord and Savior throughout eternity. Now Peter, he's preaching, he talks about the great and notable day of the Lord and how it would come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But here he says, therefore, in our text verse, verse 36 of Acts 2, therefore, hear me, O house of Israel. And uh, I want you to understand that it's important that Israel understands that they missed one of the great opportunities of their lifetime, of historical lifetime of Israel. They missed that great opportunity to crown Jesus Lord of all. Now, I just want to say in verse 22 of Acts chapter 2, 2, 2, 2, Peter says, ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among, among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves also know. But you took this Jesus of Nazareth and you crucified him, put him in the hands of wicked men and this crucified son of God and whom you knew well and you rejected him as a nation Israel. You killed him, you crucified him, you slain him. And in verse 24 of Acts 2, it says, after he was dead and in the tomb, it says, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible, everybody shout, not possible. It was not possible that he should be holding of death. It was not possible that the grave could ever hold him. It was not possible that death could ever hold our Savior Jesus Christ down. It was not possible to kill Jesus and to crucify him and him stay put. He come up out of the grave so that he could live inside of our hearts and that he could sit at the right hand of God the Father. In fact, Peter said that he has been taken by God up into heaven and he sits in the heavens and there he's making intercession for you and I. Uh, read this message that Peter preached on, on the day of Pentecost, Acts 2, and you'll discover he talked about David and how David saw and got a glimpse of the Messiah and how David was trusting in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He didn't know him by that name, but David certainly was trusting uh, the Messiah to come, and he came. And Peter says to the Israels, the, one, the very ones that crucified the Son of God, you missed him, and you knew he performed miracles, there were signs, there was a great outpouring of the Spirit of God, and you knew what he was. You knew, you heard him teach, you heard him perform, you saw him, but what you've done because of your religious 
spirit, because of your jealous spirit, because of your hunger for power, because of your hunger for glory, because of your desire to, to run things and keep things and your desire to conquer Rome. He said, you crucified the Son of God, but the Son of God did not stay crucified. He has been risen. He is risen from the grave and he ever liveth I'm thankful today that he ever liveth to make intercession for you and I as children of God. And so I want us to look at this, this, uh, this first fruits of, uh, of Pentecost for a little bit. And I want us to look at some things, some things that I think is very, very important, important. I want, first of all, to say there was conviction in that house. Now, if there's one thing the church of Jesus Christ needs more of, it's conviction when the preaching's preached. There needs to be conviction. Are you listening to me? And, and verse 37 says, now they, they heard this, they heard what Peter had preached, and they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and unto the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Now, uh, Peter said to the, to the Israel on that day of Pentecost, hear what I have to say, hear me. And then he says, they that heard this, they were convicted, they were pricked in their heart. Now, that meant they were bleeding in their heart, not literally, but they were bleeding in their heart. God had pricked their heart, and they had found that they had truly missed the Messiah, and they have crucified the Son of God. And because of that, they felt much contrition. Their heart was broken. The Savior had died, and they were responsible for its happening. I want you to know that we're all responsible for its happening. They, they, involved, they were involved in it physically and literally. We, are, we were involved in it spiritually. You say, well, I, I wasn't there. No, but you continue to sin after, after you come along, and so did I. And we need to understand more than ever that God came not to make us um, have a title in the church. God came not to, to give us wealth and untold riches. God came to save our worthless, sorry hide to keep us out of hell. That's why God came. I said that one time preaching in a revival and the, and the woman come up to me and says, I beg your pardon. I said, what are you begging my pardon for? She said, I beg your pardon. She said, I don't have a worthless, sorry uh, hide. She said, I have skin and my skin is nice. She says, animals have, have a hide. Animals like lions and tigers and bears. I said, no, ma'am. Chuck said, oh, my, no, ma'am. I, I want you, I said, ma'am, they don't have hide, they have fur. Like what you got around your neck right now. And I said, I said, ma'am, the truth is we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so Jesus come to pay for our sin. And I mean, no, everybody ought to know the story of God and his giving of his son, Jesus. Everybody ought to know who Jesus Christ is. Everybody ought to hear the story of God's love. And they heard the story of God's love and it, it, it penetrated their hearts and it convicted them and it pricked their hearts and there was convictions in, involved. And I want you to know that when conviction comes, people start trying to make preparations to meet God. And I want, I want to just bring out the second part of this message and I want to say not only was there conviction, there was caution. And when conviction comes, there should be caution. The Bible says in verse 37, those last uh, 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 four words, what shall we do? And uh, that was a question they asked Peter, what shall we do? 
And Peter answered and said in verse 38 of Acts 2, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, we need to, we need to approach eternity with caution. We need to make sure that we have it correct. They asked Peter, what shall we do? And the other apostles, and Peter said, the first thing you do is repent. Now, a lot of people don't know what repentance is. They say that's an archaic word. We don't know what repentance is. Well, just take a guess. Well, I'll give you a little hint. Stop sinning. Say, so, well, I don't know what repentance means. I'll give you a little hint. It repented the Lord that he had ever made man. That man, it sickened God that he had ever made man before the flood. And repentance makes one sick of his old life. Repentance makes one sick of his sin. Repentance means you must have, no matter what, a change in your life. And Peter says, repent and be baptized. Experience the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Repent and be baptized. Experience what Jesus Christ did for you. He died for you, he was buried for you, and he rose from the grave for you. He said, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I had a guy tell me one time, he said, well, you won't preach that because um, that scripture says to be baptized in Jesus' name. Well, I came to church today in Jesus' name. I'm preaching today in Jesus' name. I pray in Jesus' name. I walk uh, in Jesus' name. I talk in Jesus' name. I preach in Jesus' name. You singers, you sing in Jesus' name. I'm not here because of old Buddha. I'm not here because of some Sintuism religion. I'm here because a Savior, Christ the Lord, God's only begotten Son, Jehovah's Son, came to planet Earth and died and was buried and rose again. And I want you to know, I have experienced the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus, I've been emerged by his love. I've been submerged under the blessing of his love. I've been brought to the understanding of God. And so we go to the river today and be baptized. And what we'll do is we'll do it, of course, in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything we do is in the name of Jesus Christ. You say, well, won't you say other words? Or words don't make a recipe any better. Amen? It, what if the recipe said you're going to make a chocolate cake? And the recipe said, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, chocolate cake, here we go. Well, that don't make the chocolate cake any better. In fact, it won't make chocolate cake. Judy can make it mean chocolate cake. But what if we went to the recipe book and we said, and the recipe book begins, says, begin with a big bowl. Make sure that bowl is big enough to hold everything. And make sure that bowl has been washed and dried and put out and ready to go. Then take some flour. Go down to the store and buy some flour. Take that flour home and put it on the counter and open it up ever so gently lest some of the flour spills out on the counter. Take that flour and open that, that bag and take a, a, a measure and measure so many cups of flour. I don't know how many cups of flour. It may be one. I don't know. But it, it, now, how many know that's overkill on instructions? Are you listening to me? That's overkill. You want chocolate cake? Get a bowl, put some flour in it and all the other goodies and stir it up and put it in the oven and let's have dessert. And so this about baptism is give your heart to Jesus Christ. Trust the one that died on the cross of Calvary. He buried, he was buried, he rose again. He's the son of God. Trust him, put your faith in him, repent of your sin and be baptized and tell the world that you know Jesus is Lord and go down under the 
water, come up out of the water and, and, and show what happened in your heart. Show it on the outward expression. Show what has happened inside your heart by being baptized. Amen. And so Peter says, you repent, you get your sin out of your life, you come to God, you repent and be baptized in Jesus' name. And by the way, there's probably two baptisms mentioned here. Because God just teaches that when you get born again, according to 1 Corinthians 12, 13, God says when you're born again, you're baptized by one spirit into one body. In other words, the Holy Spirit baptized you into the body of Christ. When we go down to the river, I'm gonna, uh, I'm taking my brother. Um, uh, I don't care what you do with the rest of them, but I get my brother. And uh, Bob and Joshua's gonna be baptizing the others. But we go down to the river. We, we take him and we take those that are being baptized and we baptize them into the river. But long before that, Jesus Christ got a hold of them in repentance toward God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Holy Ghost baptized them into the body of Christ. We can only baptize them into the river and they get up and they go home as a sign and as a picture that you have obeyed the scriptures and I want you to know that Peter was saying I think there's two baptisms here I think there's a spirit baptism and a literal public announcement that they believe that Jesus died and rose again from the grave he said well why did Peter say repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ well who was he talking to he was talking to the Jews who was he talking to he was talking to Israel what did Israel do they killed Jesus they didn't believe he was the son of God. If Peter would have said, be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Lord, they wouldn't have known what he was talking about. So Peter just cut across the chase, just cut across the field and said, hey, you get baptized in Jesus' name. Come on. I'm sure glad I got saved in Jesus' name. I'm glad that I'm preaching in Jesus' name. I'm glad I get up every morning in Jesus' name. I gather here to worship God in Jesus' name. We gather together in the name of Jesus Christ. And when we leave here and go to the river, we're going in the name of Jesus Christ. And we're not going through a ritual and a program and a recipe and going through a certain, well, you gotta say a certain word. You gotta do a certain thing. You gotta perform a certain way. You gotta say this, you gotta say that. You gotta baptize them in the name of the Lord. And, or, or you gotta baptize them in the name of the Lord Jesus. Or you gotta baptize them in the name of Jesus Lord. Or you gotta baptize them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Or you gotta baptize them in the name of Christ Jesus Lord. Or you gotta baptize them in the name of of Christ. You got to baptize it. Come on, give me a break. We're going to the river because of Jesus. He died. He rose again. He's Lord of glory. If I believed that everybody had it all right, I'd just get a hold of my brother David today and I'd baptize him in the name of the Father. I'd baptize him again second time in the name of the Son. I'd baptize him a third time in the name of the Holy Ghost. I'd baptize him again in the name of the Lord. Then I'd baptize him again in the name of Christ. Then I'd baptize him again in the name of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Then I'd baptize him, and David says, no, you won't. And then I'll baptize him in the name of, of uh, 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 the only begotten Son. And then I'll baptize him in the name of the Son of God. Then I'll baptize him in the name of Jesus Christ. Then I'll baptize him in the name of Christ Jesus. And on and on it goes, on and on it goes. Come on, give me a break. We're going to the river because Jesus died for our sin, rose again from the grave when he was buried, and today through the death, burial, and resurrection, we're baptized as it is a picture of the death, immersion of Jesus under the waters of death, rising up out of the water as resurrected in Christ Jesus. Praise God when Peter stood up and said, repent, get your life together, repent, clean up your life, repent, turn from your sin, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Once again, I think there's two baptisms, one the Spirit of God, the one that only God can do, and the other one that man can do. And, and the one that man can do can't save you, but the, man, the one that Jesus does saves you, the one that God does saves you, amen. And the Bible says you shall receive, uh, it says, the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You say, what well, that says for remission of sin. 
You say, oh, wait a minute, preacher, that says for. That means you've got to be baptized in Jesus' name for forgiveness of sin. It says for remission of sin. Let me explain something to you. I put on this shirt. And this morning I looked in the mirror. And I said, it needs something else. I had on my pants too. <laughs> had my shirt and pants on. I'm, I'm looking in the mirror. And I said, you know, I, I think I need a tie for this shirt. Now, the tie didn't make me. The tie didn't make me decent. Clothes on my back made me decent. The tie was just the finishing touches. So I didn't get a tie to have a shirt. I didn't get a tie to have a suit. I got a tie because I have a suit. I got a tie on because I have a shirt. And I got baptized because I have forgiveness through the blood of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Woo, praise the Lord. So preacher, don't you make light of baptism. I'm not, get your sorry hide down near the river and get baptized today. I'm not soft soaking in. But we need to be, have caution about this. We need to make sure that we're doing everything right, what God requires. And God requires that we repent of our sin, put our faith in the name of Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross of Calvary. The last seven verses of Mark 10 talks about blind Bartimaeus. And blind Bartimaeus sat by the highway side, the Jericho Road, and he begged for mercy. And I want you to know his words were like this. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And he kept crying, kept crying, kept crying. You know what he was doing? He was begging for mercy. And if we're ever gonna go to heaven, we're ever gonna have heaven in our home, we're gonna have to learn to beg for mercy. Amen. I've been in the altar and begged for mercy. In fact, I begged for mercy today before I, before I had to come and meet you guys and preach to you. I beg for mercy every Sunday morning. I beg for mercy every, every Sunday night. I beg for mercy. And, and when I got saved, I begged for mercy. And, and you know, blind blind man's begged for mercy. Jesus stopped, said, bring him to me. And they said, be of good comfort, be of good cheer. The master calleth for thee. And blind Bartimaeus man throws away his beggar's cup, his beggar's robe, goes to Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ says, what would you have I do unto you? He said, Lord, that I might see. And Jesus opened his eyes healed his blindness and blind Bartimaeus followed Jesus Christ amen. amen come on now I'm preaching better than you're responding hello out there is anybody here 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 hello 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 is anybody, 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 anybody here, 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 here? Amen, 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 amen. Woo! Come on. There's an echo in this place. There was conversion because they repented of their sin and was baptized and they looked to Jesus Christ, the one that died and rose again from the grave. And the Holy Ghost was given to them by his precious power. Number three, there was conversion and that's found in Acts 2.41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them three thousand souls. Amen, isn't that good? The same day there were added unto them 3,000 souls. Now, when you go to God, God wants the truth. I say God wants the truth. He don't want you to go to God and say, you know, you know, you know, God wants the truth. Amen? It's like the guy that had the parakeet. 
out in front of his shop and a woman walked by and the old parakeet said, ah, you're ugly, you're ugly, you're ugly. Woman went by again, same day. You're ugly, ah, you're ugly, you're ugly. Every day that parakeet kept telling this woman she was ugly. Finally the woman runs into the store and says, you gotta do something about that parakeet. That, that, that parrot, it keeps saying I'm ugly and I, I, I detest that. I'm going to sue you if you don't do something about that parrot. And so the store owner went out there and he grabbed that parrot, opened that cage door, grabbed that parrot, slapped it, slapped it, and feathers just went everywhere. He said, don't you ever tell that woman she's ugly anymore. And so the woman comes storming in the next day. She is fit to be tied. She says, how dare you. And he said, what's the matter, ma'am? He said, I walked by that parrot cage. And it said, ah, you know, ah, you know. <laughs> and I want you to know, you know. Amen. God wants us to be honest. They talk about in court of law, when you go to trial and you go to be a witness, you have to swear, hand on a Bible, and, and swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God, nothing but the, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God, amen. I mean, I don't even know if they do that anymore because obviously they, they don't because everybody lies. Oh, excuse me, that's politicians. You say, I swear to tell the truth. That means not a lie. The whole truth, that means leave nothing out. And nothing but the truth, that means don't add anything to the truth, just tell the truth. And when you go to God, you confess your truth and you be honest with God. So a preacher, I don't know whether, whether um, God would forgive me. I don't know whether God will save me. I want you to understand today. You do what you can do. And God will do what you can't do. You provide the sinner, and God provides the Savior. Now, you know, I, there's different ideas about, you know, preachers preach, and they have different thoughts and different angles, and some churches believe this, and some churches believe that. Some churches believe nothing. Some churches believe something. You know, there's, there's all kinds of ideas. Preachers, you can't get them to agree on anything except Kentucky Fried Chicken. But anyway, but if I were you as a lost man in this room or a woman, if I were lost in this house right now, by hearing the message preached, there's several things I would do. Number one, I would repent of my sin. I would ask God for mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, after begging for mercy and asking Jesus Christ to forgive me of my sin, believing that he died for my sin, rose again from the grave, that he is the son of God, I would cry out to God and God would change my life. I would go to the river and I would be baptized. And after I went to the river and got baptized, then I would follow the Lord all the days and the rest of my life. I would learn the scriptures. I would grow in the things of the Lord. Let me share with you one more train of thought and we'll give the invitation. Uh, Acts chapter two, verse 42. This is continuance. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. What that meant was, as they came to the Lord Jesus Christ, they asked God for forgiveness, they begged God for mercy, God came in their life, they cleared their heart for the Lord, they asked Christ to come in their heart, they were baptized and followed the Lord Jesus Christ, believing that he died, shed his blood for their sin, he, he, he was put in a tomb, he rose again from the grave, believing that Jesus is Lord and Christ, they were baptized, followed the Lord, added to the church three thousand people added to the church of Jesus Christ and then they went 
continually to the house of the Lord. Then they went continually to breaking of the bread. Then they went continually hearing the voice of the Lord. They continued in the way that God called them to do. By the way, we're gonna have the Lord's Supper next Sunday morning. And if you haven't participated in the Lord's Supper communion, you, you need to be here next Sunday because we're gonna have the breaking of the bread and the Lord's Supper next Sunday morning. But I, I wanna say that the, the breaking of bread and the, uh, the cup, the bread and the cup, that is a symbol, that is a, that is a sacrament. It's a symbol of the breaking of the bread and the, and the cup, the, the blood of our Lord and the body of our Lord. That's a symbol, it's, a, it's an illustration, it's an outward expression, just like baptism. It's an outward expression, just like baptism. You know what we're doing? You don't see these communion trays full of vine juice or grape juice. You don't see any bread. But you know what? We are breaking the bread now. The bread is called the Word of God. We're breaking the bread now. We're taking of the cup. The cup is called the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we are partaking of the blood and the bread of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because he died for our sin. Now next Sunday, we are going to have the literal outward expression of what we're enjoying now. Same way if you go to the river. You're going to enjoy an outward expression of what God has already done in your heart. And if I were not saved today, if I wasn't sure of my salvation, I have a little more I could preach this morning, but we need to get to the river. I, I, I need to cool off. I'm sweating hot. I'm hot. I'm, I mean, I'm sweaty and hot. I need to get to the river. But before we go to the river, I want to invite you to come to this altar. Yes, we still have an altar, and we always will. I want to invite you to come to this altar and do like blind Bartimaeus, beg for mercy. Ask God to forgive you, change your life, turn around, let God change your life, and let God do something in your heart to emerge you in Jesus' name into the body of Christ. Then you'll be ready to go to the river and be baptized. So, well, preacher, I want to go to the altar, but I don't want to be baptized today. Then there's, there's more times available. We're going to baptize. In fact, we'll stop what we're doing tonight and go back to the river. Hey, listen to me. We, whenever you want it. I mean, the truth is, if you call us up on a Wednesday, uh, uh, Wednesday, we'll do it on a Wednesday night. You call us up on a Monday and say, look, I've got, I've got one hour left between work and I've got to go to work. I've got one hour there or 30 minutes. Or call me and say, I've got 15 minutes. Can you get me underwater in 15 minutes? Yeah, boy. I can. So there's no excuse not to be baptized. So, well, you know, I have a lunch break for 30 minutes. Can I eat a sandwich and my potato chips and drink a Coca-Cola and still be baptized and back to work on time? Yeah, boy. You're going to go under the water chewing tater chips, but we'll get her done. Josh, come and bring us home. I want to invite you today. Terry's been, his voice is still weak, and I've been missing his singing, but uh, April says she's been enjoying the silence at home. <laughs> but Terry's getting better, and you keep praying for Terry. He's a great instrument in our church, a great blessing. Stand with me. We're going to invite you to come. Maybe you could begin that process, Repent. Ask God for forgiveness. You say, well, I'm not a bad person. Well, I'm sorry. God only takes bad people. You say, well, I'm not a bad person. Then you can't be saved. You've got to know that you've been bad. Amen? You've got to know the milk's spoiled or you'll keep drinking it. You've got to know the Kool-Aid's poison or you'll keep drinking it. You need to respond to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You come as they play and sing.